sa gitna ng mapanubok na panahon Magkahatid sa kakibat ay diskusyon Sama-sama tayo Kahit magkalayo Sa programang ito Tiyak ang pagkatuto Teleradyo Teleradyo Marcelo Teleradyo Teleradyo Marcelo Teleradyo Teleradyo Marcelo Good morning, Delphilarians. Welcome to Tele Radio Marcelo, ang telearalan ng bawat malolenyo. I am Mrs. Maria Shella L. Reyes from Junior High School Science Department, your teacher broadcaster for today. So join me as we venture for a wonderful and fun learning experience. Are you ready, Delphilarians? Don't forget to like, share, and follow us in our YouTube and Facebook page. So before we start with our lesson, let's have a review. So let's recall the first quarter. So during first quarter, we talk about physics. We tackled about Newton's law of motion, light, electricity, etc. And then during the second quarter, we tackled about earth and space. The different topics are typhoon, earthquake, and space. And then last third quarter, we talk about chemistry. The different topics included are atoms, matter, and periodic table. So today, we're going to talk all about biology, this fourth quarter. So what is biology? Biology is the study of living things. Living things are highly organized and structured. Some living things contain one cell that performs all needed function. Multicellular organisms are made of many parts that are needed for survival. These parts are divided into levels of organization. So first we have cell. Cells are basic unit structure and function in the human body as they are in living things. Each cell carries out basic life processes. Next is tissues. Tissues is a group of connected cells that have a similar function. And then, organ. An organ is a structure that consists of two or more types of tissues that work together to do the same job. Examples of human organs include the brain, heart, lungs, skin, and stomach. Human organs are organized into an organ system. An organ system is a group of organs that work together to carry out a complex overall function 
in an organism. Organism is considered as the highest level of organization. Human organism consists of 11 organ systems. So to recall the lesson you tackled during grade seven, let's watch this video clip about human organ system. The human body is a complex network of cells, tissues, and organs that together make life possible. Ten major systems are responsible for the body's functions. Skeletal, muscular, cardiovascular, nervous, endocrine, lymphatic, respiratory, digestive, urinary, reproductive. The skeletal, muscular, cardiovascular, and nervous systems in particular create an infrastructure that facilitates the other systems. The adult skeletal system is a framework of over 200 bones. They hold the body together, give it shape, and protect its organs and tissues. The skeleton also provides anchor points for the muscular system, which includes three types of muscles, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. They are found throughout the body and facilitate movement. Nestled within these muscles is the cardiovascular system, a pipeline that includes the heart, blood vessels, and the blood itself. Also called the circulatory system, the cardiovascular system delivers oxygen, white blood cells, hormones, and nutrients throughout the body. Lastly, the nervous system is a communication network of nerve cells that the body uses to transmit information and coordinate bodily functions. It's comprised of the brain, the hub of sensory and intellectual activity, the spinal cord, and the many cranial and spinal nerves that emanate from them. This infrastructure created by neurons, blood, muscles, and bones allows three other systems to regulate the body's environment, the endocrine, lymphatic, and urinary systems. The endocrine system is a series of glands that use information carried by the nervous system to help regulate the body's processes. Thanks to this neural connection, endocrine glands, such as the thyroid, are aware of the amount of hormones and other chemicals they need to produce. These chemicals are then distributed throughout the body by way of the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular and nervous systems are also utilized by the lymphatic system, a collection of lymph nodes and vessels that help regulate the body's defenses. Also called the immune system, the lymphatic system uses neural pathways to transmit information about affected areas of the body and then sends out healing agents like white blood cells via the bloodstream. Another key regulatory system is the urinary system, which includes the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. The urinary, or renal system, maintains the body's electrolyte levels and filters waste from the blood. This waste is sent through the blood vessels, into the kidneys, and then expelled as urine. All of these systems require energy to function, and that's where the respiratory and digestive systems come in. The respiratory system is a group of passageways and organs that extracts life-giving oxygen from the air we breathe. Air enters the body through nasal cavities, travels down the throat, and is then transported to the lungs. The lungs extract oxygen for the body to use and then expel a carbon dioxide byproduct when we exhale. Energy can also come in the form of food. The digestive system is an approximately 30-foot series of organs that convert food into fuel. Food enters the system through the mouth, then moves into the esophagus, the stomach, and the intestines. Nutrients are absorbed into the body while solid waste is expelled through the anal canal, the end of the digestive tract. No matter the role, size, or shape of any of the body's systems, each began with the reproductive system. This system is responsible for creating life. The primary organs involved differ between the sexes, with ovaries, fallopian tubes, the uterus, and vagina found in women, and testes and a sperm channel found in men. Together, 
fertilization may occur, organ systems form, and then a child is born. Humans are complicated organisms. But when our 10 major organ systems are healthy, they ensure our well-being. Okay, so the human organ system consists of skeletal, muscular, cardiovascular, nervous, endocrine, lymphatic, respiratory, reproductive, urinary, and the digestive system. So today, our topic is all about digestive system. So most essential learning competency for today's lesson is to explain ingestion, absorption, assimilation, and excretion. Living things need energy to do work. This energy comes from the food. Food is any substance consumed to provide nutritional support for an organism. Food is usually a plant, animal, and contains essential nutrients, such as carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, or minerals. So how does food turn into energy? For food to release energy and provide nourishment, it must be broken down into small pieces, which the body can absorb and utilize. So how does food broken down into their simplest form? What chemical reactions bring about such change or transformation? The answer is the digestion process. Digestion is the breakdown of large, complex organic molecules into smaller components that can be used by the body. Molecules need to be small enough to diffuse across plasma membranes. There are steps of digestion. First is ingestion. Ingestion is the intake of food. Next is digestion. It is the breaking down of food so that it can be absorbed by the body. And then absorption. It is the process of absorbing food in the form of nutrients into the bloodstream of the body. Next is assimilation. It is the process of nutrients being absorbed by each cell of the body in the form of energy. And then ingestion. It is the secretion of waste unwanted and excess substances from the body after food that has been digested. The human digestive system includes structures that form the elementary canal and the accessory organs digestion. So let's talk about first the structures of the oral cavity. The so oral cavity is bounded by the teeth, tongue, heart palate, and soft palate. So these structures 
make up the mouth and play a key role in the first step of digestion, which is ingestion. This is where the teeth and tongue work with salivary glands to break down food into small masses that can be swallowed, preparing them for the journey through the elementary canal. So did you know that we have two types of digestion? We have what you call the mechanical and then the chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion begins when the teeth break down ingested food. The movement of the jaw enables the teeth to grind food into small fragments. The mandible or jaw bone is the only bone in the head that moves and the points where the temporal bones connect to the mandible make up only the two movable joints in the head. So the official name for that is chewing or mastication. So this is the first step in mechanical digestion. Saliva moistens food and begins the process of chemical digestion. Six salivary glands located around the oral cavity secrete saliva. This substance moves out of the glands into the oral cavity through the saliva is 99% water but also contains enzymes, and proteins that lubricate the oral cavity and begin chemical digestion of food. There are three pairs of salivary glands. You have the parotid, submandibular, and sublingual glands. And then the two ducts, we have the stensens and salivary ducts on either side of the oral cavity. The tongue creates a bolus so it can travel down the pharynx and esophagus. The tongue manipulates the chewed food into a small mass called bolus, then moves it to the oral pharynx. The next steps are involuntary are involuntary. The bolus passes through the pharynx, the epiglottis closes of the trachea, and directs the bolus down the esophagus. And peristaltic waves move the bolus into the stomach. So how food moves through the elementary canal? The esophagus is the, is the narrowest part of the elementary canal. The elementary canal is a single continuous tube that includes the oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. After food is chewed, made into bolus, and swallowed, the action of the epiglottis routes the bolus into the esophagus. From there, Peristaltic waves propel ingested food stops through the elementary canal.
The respiratory and digestive system share structures in the back of the oral cavity that connect with both the trachea of the respiratory and the esophagus of the digestive system. So what prevents swallowed food from going down the wrong pipe? So with each swallow, a structure called the epiglottis closes over the respiratory structures. The swallow bolus stays on course and is direct toward the esophagus. On one peristaltic wave, it can be an to move the bolus down the esophagus into the stomach. Peristalsis is the construction or the contraction of muscle tissue that helps move and break down food stops. So the walls of the elementary canal include layers of smooth muscle controlled by autonomic nervous system. Alternating contraction and relaxation of these muscles is called peristalsis. Peristaltic waves push the swallowed balls down the esophagus. In the stomach, peristalsis churns swallowed food, mixing it with gastric juices. Peristaltic waves move nutrients and waste through the intestines. So most nutrients absorption from foods that we eat, it occurs in the small intestine. So when chyme passes from the stomach into the small intestine, peristaltic waves ship it back and forth and mix it with digestive enzymes and fluids. So what are the accessory organs in digestion? So peristi have the liver. So the liver secretes bile to emulsify fats in the small intestine. The liver is considered as the largest organ in the body and continuously producing bile. This yellowish brown fluid aids chemical digestion by emulsifying fats in the duodenum. Bile flows out of the liver into the right and left hepatic ducts, into the common hepatic ducts and towards the small intestine to help with the digestion and absorption of fats. So if bile is not immediately needed for digestion, it flows up the cystic top to the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a green, pear shape, per shaped sac about 10 cm or 4 inches. So it stores and concentrates excess bile secreted by the liver. Bile is released by the gallbladder as needed in the small intestine. The pancreas secretes pancreatic juice. It's a mix of digestive enzymes, water, poppers, or what you call the bicarbonates, and electrolytes. It is produced by acinar and epithelial cells. So pancreatic juice drains through the main pancreatic duct into the common bile duct and then into small intestine. So there it buffers stomach acids and breaks down protein, fats, and carbohydrates. So how the human body absorbs nutrients and eliminates waste? So digestion is completed in the small intestine and nutrients are absorbed through its wall. So we have three regions of small intestines. We have duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. 
the most chemical digestion takes place in the duodenum. It is the first layer of the small intestine. Bili is the line of the walls of the small intestines that absorbs nutrients into capillaries of the circulatory system and lactals of the lymphatic system. So bili contain capillary beds as well as lymphatic vessels called lactils. So fatty acids absorb from broken, broken down kind passing to the lactils. So other absorbed nutrients in, enter the bloodstream through the capillary beds and are taken directly to the liver by a hepatic brain for processing. And then of course, the large intestine, it is the one that completes the absorption and compacts trace. So we have parts of the large intestine. So we have the ascending colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, have the secum, the ileocecal bulb, the transverse colon, and then we have the sigmoid colon. So once chyme passes from the small intestine through the ileocecal bulb, and into the secum of the large intestine. So any remaining nutrients and some water are absorbed in peristaltic waves and move the chyme into the ascending and transverse colons. This dehydration combined with peristaltic waves, it helps compact the chyme. So the solid waste form is called pieces. So it continues to move through the descending and sigmoid colons the large intestines temporarily stores the pieces prior to elimination. Depication eliminates waste from the body. So as the body expels waste products from digestion through the rectum and anus, this process called depication involves contraction of rectal muscles, relaxation of the internal anal sphincter, and an initial contraction of the skeletal muscle of the external anal sphincter. The depication reflex is mostly involuntary under the command of the autonomic nervous system. But the somatic nervous system also plays a role to control the timing of elimination. So to wrap the discussion, so let's watch a video clip about digestive system. Across the whole planet, Humans eat on average between 1 and 2.7 kilograms of food a day. That's over 365 kilograms a year per person, and more than 28,800 kilograms over the course of a lifetime. And every last scrap makes its way through the digestive system. Comprised of 10 organs covering 9 meters and containing over 20 specialized cell types, this is one of the most diverse and complicated systems in the human body. Its parts continuously work in unison to fulfill a singular task, transforming the raw materials of your food into the nutrients and energy that keep you alive. Spanning the entire length of your torso, the digestive system has four main components. First, there's the gastrointestinal tract, a twisting channel that transports your food and has an internal surface area of between 30 and 40 square meters enough to cover half a badminton court. Second, there's the pancreas, gallbladder, and liver, a trio of organs that break down food using an array of special juices. Third, the body's enzymes, hormones, nerves, and blood all work together to break down food, modulate the digestive process, 
and deliver its final products. Finally, there's the mesentery, a large stretch of tissue that supports and positions all your digestive organs in the abdomen, enabling them to do their jobs. The digestive process begins before food even hits your tongue. Anticipating a tasty morsel, glands in your mouth start to pump out saliva. We produce about 1.5 liters of this liquid each day. Once inside your mouth, chewing combines with the sloshing saliva to turn food into a moist lump called the bolus. Enzymes present in the saliva break down any starch. Then your food finds itself at the rim of a 25 centimeter long tube called the esophagus, down which it must plunge to reach the stomach. Nerves in the surrounding esophageal tissue sense the bolus's presence and trigger peristalsis, a series of defined muscular contractions. That propels the food into the stomach, where it's left at the mercy of the muscular stomach walls, which pound the bolus, breaking it into chunks. Hormones secreted by cells in the lining trigger the release of acids and enzyme-rich juices from the stomach wall that start to dissolve the food and break down its proteins. These hormones also alert the pancreas, liver, and gallbladder to produce digestive juices and transfer bile, a yellowish-green liquid that digests fat, in preparation for the next stage. After three hours inside the stomach, the once shapely bolus is now a frothy liquid called chyme, and it's ready to move into the small intestine. The liver sends bile to the gallbladder, which secretes it into the first portion of the small intestine, called the duodenum. Here, it dissolves the fats floating in the slurry of chyme so they can be easily digested by the pancreatic and intestinal juices that have leached onto the scene. These enzyme-rich juices break the fat molecules down into fatty acids and glycerol for easier absorption into the body. The enzymes also carry out the final deconstruction of proteins into amino acids and carbohydrates into glucose. This happens in the small intestine's lower regions, the jejunum and ileum, which are coated in millions of tiny projections called villi. These create a huge surface area to maximize molecule absorption and transference into the bloodstream. The blood takes them on the final leg of their journey to feed the body's organs and tissues. But it's not over quite yet. Leftover fiber, water, and dead cells sloughed off during digestion make it into the large intestine, also known as the colon. The body drains out most of the remaining fluid through the intestinal wall. What's left is a soft mass called stool. The colon squeezes this byproduct into a pouch called the rectum, where nerves sense it expanding, and tell the body when it's time to expel the waste. The byproducts of digestion exit through the anus, and the food's long journey, typically lasting between 30 and 40 hours, is finally complete. TED-Ed is a nonprofit. If you value our work, please consider supporting it on Patreon. Okay, so quiz time. So we're going to have multiple choice. So first question, which of the following is not a function of salivary glands? A start digestion of proteins, B, helps bind food particles, C, secrete saliva, D, makes taste possible. Okay, you can comment your answer in the comment box. So what is the correct answer? It is letter D. So very good for those who got it right. So question number two. Which of the following is not a function of the stomach? A. Receives food. B. Mixes food with gastric juice. C carries out limited amount of absorption. D, moves food into the large intestine. Ok, 
Okay, what is the correct answer? Okay, it is letter D. Okay, very good for those who got it right. Next question. Question number three. The function of the liver is to metabolize is to A, metabolize carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. B, filtration of blood. C, detoxification of chemicals. D, all of the above. Okay, the correct answer is letter D. Did you arrive at the same answer? Okay, bravo for everyone. Okay, question number four. The parts of the small intestine start with the part closest to the stomach are A, duodenum, jejunum, ilium. B, duodenum, Ilium, jejunum. C. Ilium, jejunum, duodenum. D. Ilium, duodenum, jejunum. What do you think is the correct answer? Okay, the correct answer is letter A. Duodenum, jejunum, and ilium. Okay, very good learners. Question number five. Which of the following is not a source of carbohydrates? A, starch. B, amino acids. C, glycogen. D, disaccharides. What do you think is the correct answer? Is it letter A, B, or C, or D? Okay, let's find out. The correct answer is letter B. Amino acid. So very good for those who got it right. Okay, question number six. The digestive enzyme pepsin secreted by gastric glands begins the digestion of A, carbohydrates. B, protein, C, fat. The correct answer is letter B. Keep going, grade eight learners. Okay, next question number seven. So what propulsive function that occurs in the esophagus? A, segmentation. B, ingestion. C, peristalsis. D, depication. The correct answer is letter, letter C, peristalsis. We keep going. Question number eight. Which of the following is the correct order for gastrointestinal tract? A, esophagus, stomach, large intestine, small intestine, mouth. Letter B. Stomach, large intestine, small intestine, esophagus, mouth. 
C. Mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. Letter D. Mouth, stomach, esophagus, large intestine, and small intestine. What is the correct answer? So don't forget to type down your answer in the comment box. Okay, the correct answer is letter, letter C. Did you get it right, learners? Okay, very good. Question number nine. Chewing food with teeth and tongue is an example of A. A. Mechanical digestion. B. Chemical digestion. C. Peristalsis. D. Enzymatic reaction. So type your answers in the comment box. What is the correct letter? So the correct answer is letter A, mechanical digestion. Okay, let's move on now with question number 10. Villi present in the small intestine are important because they create more blank so that more digested food can be absorbed into the bloodstream. A, pieces, B, enzymes, C, lipids or lipids, D, surface area. Key in your answer in the comment box. Okay, the correct answer is letter B. Okay, very good learners. So let's move on now with identification. So we're going to identify the name of each color digestive organ. So we're going to identify the colored yellow organ, the orange, blue, light blue, pink, purple, light green, and green. So I'm going to give you two minutes to answer. Let's start. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so time is up. Okay, let's find out the correct answer. Okay, so yellow four is of a goose. Orange is a small intestine. Blue is the stomach. Light blue, appendix. Pink, pancreas. Purple, have large intestine. Light green, the liver. And then the green color, it is a gallbladder. Okay, so how many got it right? So very good learners. Okay, so remember that. Do all the good you can. By all the means you can. In all the ways you can in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. And it's by John Wesley. So again, I am Mama Rochella L. Reyes from Science Department. So signing off. And tell her Rajo Marcelo. So stay safe, stay home, and then God bless everyone. your service. Kaya naman, ang feedback mo, suggestions nyo ay mahalaga sa amin to improve our programs on air and online. Para alam ni teacher yung strengths as well as the things in your mind na mas makatutulong sa mas effective na pagkatuto sa Teleradio. Please take time to send your feedbacks via Teleradio Mu, which you can access by scanning the QR code on the right or typing the URL provided here bit.ly slash 3 o r v a y 9 One more this time you follow bit.ly slash 3 o r v a y 9 Kaya send your hashtag tbh o hashtag rt dito sa Teleradium U Kung saan ang feedback mo, suggestions nyo, ay mahalaga sa Telerazo. Mano o Teleradio, makinig mano o na sa Teleradio, Teleradio, Teleradio Marcelo. Sa gitna ng mapanubok na panahon, magkahatid sa kakibat ay diskusyon, sama-sama tayo, kahit magkalayo. Sa programa ng ito, tiyak ang pagkatuto. Teleradio, Teleradio Marcelo, Teleradio, Teleradio Marcelo, Teleradio, Teleradio Marcelo.